What does Palace see in the final seconds of this film? We might be tempted to compare this final look to the ending of Truffaut's 400 Blows. Or to the ending of Godard's Breathless. In doing so, we might conclude that Paula is looking at us, knowing that Godard and Truffaut were deeply influenced by Bergman's Summer with Monica. In particular, Harriet Anderson's penetrating stare into the camera, which transgresses the space and time of cinema to engage us, the viewer. We would recognize that in each instance there is no reverse shot, just a confrontational gaze implicating the viewer as objectifier, bystander, spectator. And so we might conclude that Paula is also looking at us in a similar manner. But is she? Unlike Antoine, Patricia, or Monica, we have not been following Paula throughout the film. She has hardly been in our thoughts. Instead, our eyes have been on Marcello for nearly three hours. We have seen Paola on the screen for less than three minutes. When she turns towards the camera after watching Marcello leave, it is not her plight that we are pondering. Why then does she look in our direction? If there is a clue to this final glance, it's found in an earlier scene which takes place in the middle of the film, a scene that is both literally and figuratively central to La Dolce Vita. If there is a shot that marks the transition in the cinema of Federico Fellini, it is here. Did you see it? Try again. Look closely and you'll see a point of view rupture. Do not mistake this as trivial. The move is both deliberate and defiant. It is the result of a director orchestrating a moment that is at once so spectacular and yet so seamless, it's hardly recognizable. Let's start again. Steiner's wife greets the camera, establishing the shot as a point of view. Steiner comes into focus his eyes are already locked. He moves forward, and then... Marcello enters the frame. The reveal of Marcello both clarifies and complicates the sequence. We now know that the initial point of view is Marcello's. He enters the room, and Steiner gets up to greet him. And then, Steiner's eyes move from the camera to Marcello. But what does this mean? If the camera represents Marcello's point of view, what happens in this moment? Is our identity with Marcello being revoked, one moment sharing his point of view, and the next being left on the outside, abandoned by Marcello? Or is it something more fantastic and unbelievable? The scene moves forward without any explanation, and later, this detachment is echoed when Steiner bids Marcello to follow him into the children's room. The camera stays on Steiner for the remainder of the scene. We assume Marcello has followed, but we never actually see or hear from him again. 
Steiner moves to the window to reflect on life. La vita è fuori di te, distaccati. Distaccati. As if to emphasize this existential reflection, we see Steiner reflected in the window. Two Steiners, one embodied, the other ghostly. A Steiner detached. Is this a clue? Has Marcello been split in two? One embodied, the other ghostly. As if his body moved forward and his spirit remained. Does it foreshadow the dream perspective that Fellini will use in eight and a half? A film that moves so seamlessly between dream and reality that it becomes increasingly difficult to know which is which? Does it represent a fundamental shift toward a new kind of realism that includes the realm of spirits and ghosts? Is it the detached spirit of Marcello that has followed Steiner into the room? Is this why we do not see or hear from Marcello? When Jane goes on a ghost hunt, is it a coincidence because it's the ghost that catches Jane? Well, what a coincidence. Another look into the camera, another absence of a reverse shot, another implication of a disembodied Marcello. So what does Paula see in the end? When she moves her eyes from Marcello to the camera, is she somehow responding to Steiner's move from the camera to Marcello? By ending the film on Paola's gaze, is Fellini actually ending the film on the detached perspective of Marcello, freed from this so-called sweet life, from this so-called reality? And in doing so, is Fellini also freeing himself from the boundaries of neorealism? realism 